Welcome to our midweek service here at Fellowship Church. We're so glad that you tuned in. And I believe that we're going to have a great time together. We're going to get in the Word and we are going to get blessed. Hallelujah. And I'm sure that all of you are getting ready for Thanksgiving and it's uh, one of my favorite holidays. Hallelujah. And I didn't grow up with this holiday in Norway, but uh, I sure have embraced it after I got over here because it is a good thing to be thankful for all that God has provided for us. Hallelujah. And uh, I also would like to encourage you to, if you missed last Sunday's service, Pastor Mike had a great message, and I believe it'll stir you, and so uh, I would encourage you to go back and find it online. We have it on YouTube and also on Facebook, and would just, 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 just take time out of your, you know, the next couple of days and listen to it, because I know it is going to bless you. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. We're going to get into the Word here, and uh, I want to start first of all with uh, taking up our tithes and offerings uh, I believe it is fitting hallelujah to to worship God with our tithes and offerings at the beginning of the service you know we didn't have any worship today because I'm here in your living room and I'm sure that you didn't sing three songs and worship God before we got here maybe you did that would be great but in case you didn't here we are and so we're going to start with taking up our tithes and offerings and uh, there will be a slide on the screen there to show you how you can participate Last time that I was talking to you, uh, I, I mentioned the same scripture that I'm going to read to you now regarding giving. But do you know that we need to read scriptures again and again and again to really get what they are trying to get across to us, to get it settled in our heart? Hallelujah. And so in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and uh, I'm going to start here in verse 6. No, let's jump to chapter 9 and verse 6. That will work a lot better. Hallelujah. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6, it says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So that each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work as it is written he has dispersed abroad he has given to the poor his righteousness endures forever now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness hallelujah this last verse here is like if you even if you don't have anything to sow right now he gives seed to the sower. So if you don't have anything to give into the offering today, ask God for seed to sow so that you can participate and do what you have in your heart to do. And also want to uh, point out a couple of other things here is that it says in verse 7, so that each one give us a purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Well, a cheerful giver is a happy-to-do-it giver, one that gives because he wants to, because his heart is in it. And I'm going to encourage you, if, if your heart is not in it, you might as well not give. Hallelujah. But if your heart is in it, then you can expect what this Scripture says. And this Scripture says that God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, say this with me, always, hallelujah, that you always, having all sufficiency say all sufficiency hallelujah in all things say in all things hallelujah may have an abundance for every good work and that word abundance means over and above enough and to spare that's what God wants for you and he will increase the seed that you have sown so praise the Lord now that we know how to how to sow and we know that God will supply all of our needs let's lift up our offerings hallelujah and let's pray over them father we love you and we want to come to you father here at the beginning of our service hallelujah and show you we put you first father you are first in our lives father God you are the one that has given us life and that more abundantly you are the one that has given us grace to do life you are the one that's given us strength, Father God, hallelujah, to, to work and to, and to take care of our families, Father God. I thank you, Father, for your abundant grace upon us and that we will always have over and above and enough and to spare, Father, because you are good and you are watching over your word to perform it. And we give in Jesus' name, amen, hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. 
That made me happy right there. Glory be to God. Well, today I'm gonna talk to you about some of the things that I talked to you about here last time uh, on, on last Wednesday, so it's gonna feel like some of it is a little bit of a repetition, but then we're gonna move into some, some new territory, and I know it's gonna bless you, hallelujah. And I would encourage you when, you, when you sit there, you know, now in your living room or if you're in your, wherever you are, basically, take this seriously, hallelujah. In, in 1 Thessalonians, Chapter 2 and verse 13, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13, it shows you a bunch of people where the word was bearing abundant fruit, and I'm going to show you why. In verse 13 it says, For this reason we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. Hallelujah. Did you know that the word of God has substance? Hallelujah. And when you receive it, it the word of God is like a container with ability. And so when you receive the word as a citizen truth, God speaking to you, guess what? You are going to receive that enabling that that word is talking about. Hallelujah. So when you take it seriously, when you, when you just receive the word because it is God's word, then it's going to produce in you. It's going to work effectively in you the same way it worked effectively in the Thessalonian church. Hallelujah. And that is so exciting. I'm so excited about the word of God. The word of God is alive. Hallelujah. And it always produces what it was sent to produce. It always Hallelujah, produces a great harvest in those that honor God and in those that receive the word, hallelujah, as it is in truth, the word of God. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Are you guys ready? Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Let's just pray, hallelujah, before we start. Father, we love you. We love your word, Father God. Oh, Father, teach us, Father, the path of righteousness, Father God. Give us light and understanding of the word, Father, that we are looking into together today, Father. We know and we acknowledge you, Father God. We acknowledge you in all of our ways, Father. We acknowledge that your spirit is the only one who can truly give us light, who can truly reveal your word to us, Father God. So we ask for help today. I ask for unction, Father God, to speak the word clearly and accurately as I ought. To. I ask, Father, for great grace on each and every one, Father, that tunes in to this service today, Father, that their hearts will be open, their ears will be clear, so they can hear, Father, what you want them to hear today. And we give you all the praise and all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to start here in a scripture that I've shared with you many, many times. Hallelujah. And I'm going to do it again today. Hallelujah, I have been set free from the fear of repetition because I know that the word of God is alive, hallelujah, and it will produce in you, <laughs> hallelujah, when you receive it, glory be to Jesus. And I'm gonna read here from Numbers chapter 13, and I'm gonna start in verse one, hallelujah. Numbers 13, verse one, and you know the story. This is a story about the 12 spies going in and spying out the land of Canaan, which the Lord said, I have given unto you this land. And in verse one, it says, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I'm giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, everyone a leader among them. So <laughs> if you know the 12 spies, we're going to read some of the rest of the story here, but I want you to keep this in mind. Every one of them was a leader. But just because you're a leader does not mean that you will inherit the promise of God. Hallelujah. Because Joshua was one of the spies. Caleb was one of the spies. We know those, but the rest of the ten, we can't even remember their names. Hallelujah. Because they made some choices that were not so good. So I'm going to continue reading. We're going to jump up to verse 17, and I'm going to read quite a bit of scripture here, so just uh, look it up on your phone, your device, whatever, and just follow me, Hallelujah. or you can look on the screen, praise the Lord. In Numbers 13, verse 17, then Moses sent them out to spy out the land of Canaan, and said to them, go up this way into the south, and go up to the mountains, and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong, or weak, few, or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not. Be of good courage, he throws in the middle of this, and bring some of the fruit of the land. 
Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Sin as far as Rehob near the entrance of Hamath. And they went up through the south and came to Hebron. Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmai, the descendants of Anak, were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Soan in Egypt and the descendants of Anak, they were, they were giants, huge guys. Verse 23, then they came to the valley of Eshkol and they cut down, a branch, cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the valley of Eshkol because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. Now they departed and came back from Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And before I read on here, I just want to let you know that, you know, this, this takes away the fact that faith is blind. No, Moses told them to go out and spy out the land. Hallelujah. So faith is not blind. Faith sees reality. Hallelujah. And then it applies the power of God to it. Okay, let's go to verse 27. Then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, or you can say in all, how the word we would use would be but. <laughs> Watch out for the but. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let's go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. You can see here that there was two different views of what was going on. You have Caleb and Joshua and they say we are well able. Let's go up and possess it at once. You know Caleb he recognized the, the, the defeat and he recognized the unbelief right away and he realized we have to get, grab a hold of this right now and turn it around. The other people we're, our, we're not able. We are like grasshoppers in our sight and in their sight. And as I've said before, you might know what you like, you look like in your own eyes, but you do not know what your circumstances thinks of you or the people think of you. Hallelujah. But as it says in Proverbs 23 and verse 7 at the beginning of the scripture, it says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. And that's true about us as well. How we see ourselves is how we're going to approach life. That's how we're going to handle situations that come our way. It's going to be regarding to how we see ourselves. And these, some of these guys, they saw themselves as grasshoppers. Basically, we are not able at all. These guys are giants. We are not able, even though they should have known better. And a lot of times we get up against possibility, you know, circumstances in our lives and we say we are not able, even though we should know better, because we should know that God lives in us and that he has enabled us to overcome in life. And sometimes we are like this bunch. But now I want to jump to Joshua chapter 14, and I want to see how this guy, <laughs> his disposition, hallelujah, and then we're going to tell you why, hallelujah. In Joshua chapter 14, and we're going to start in verse 6. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenesite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Hallelujah. I'm going to continue reading, but I'm going to stop here for a minute. He brought back report as it was in his heart and the other guys they brought back report as was in their heart two different reports saw the same thing two different reports 
This is important as we go on in our message here. In verse 8, I'm going to continue reading. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. (laughs) So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years Ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am this day, 85 years old. Hallelujah. As yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now therefore give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Yephunneh, as an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Yephunneh, the Kenesite, to this day because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron formerly was Kirjit Arba. Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim. And then the land had rest from War, hallelujah. So we see that Caleb, he had a different disposition. He saw things differently. He saw that this is not a problem. He saw that we can do this. His disposition was very, very different from the majority. And you will see this in the walk of faith. When you, when you live your life by faith, as every Christian should, that the majority just won't they will not walk you know and and inherit the fullness of what God has for them and it has to do with how we have treated our hearts and what we put in there we're going to get more into that as we go and I want to go to Joshua chapter 1 and these are familiar scriptures but we need to bring them back to the forefront of our minds. I believe there's a reason why the Lord has impressed this on me again today is because we need to have this in the front of our minds and see that we are responsible to guard our hearts and to put in our hearts what needs to be there. So in Joshua chapter 1, I'm going to start in verse 1. So after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will thread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness in this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide us in inheritance, the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. This will preach all on its own. Just reading it. Hallelujah. He said it three times. Be strong or be very strong and courageous. Hallelujah. So as a child of God, God has commanded you as well. Be strong and be of good courage because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. And that changes every situation because you don't walk into it by yourself. God is there with you. Hallelujah. But what does he tell Joshua in verse 8? And I know you've heard this before, and you're going to hear it again. He says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Hallelujah. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So he said, put 
this word or you can say now for us we have the whole bible put the word of god in your mouth meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do hallelujah because when you observe to do then you will have good success but unless you meditate on the word on a consistent basis you will not observe to do you will not be like caleb and say come on we are well able to overtake these people because the Lord our God is with us. As a Christian, you are never alone. God said when, when, when you received him, when you received Jesus, hallelujah, he is God. When you received him as your Lord and Savior, God, the Holy Ghost, moved in, hallelujah, to your heart, hallelujah. He is there and he is strong. Hallelujah. He has the ability of God. He is in you. He is with you. And he will help you. He won't do it for you. But he will help you to do whatever it is that God has called you to do. And then this is one of my favorite scriptures. Proverbs chapter 4. I've, I, I, I go back to this again and again and again. And I see how vital it is. And we're going to read it here. From verse 20, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep, <laughs> hallelujah, keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it spring the issues of life. Glory. Keep your heart. With all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life or the outgoings of life comes from your heart. Did you know that healing and health comes from your heart? It flows from the throne of God through your heart and into your body. Hallelujah. Did you know that light and revelation flows through your heart to your mind? Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of that heart of yours flows the issues of life. Hallelujah. And that's why, you know, the, the kids' song, you know, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. And then I don't know the rest of it, but it's so true. Be careful, eyes, what you see. Be careful, be careful, ears, what you hear. Hallelujah. So why is this important? Well, you can see why it's so important. It's going gonna, it's gonna to determine how you tackle life, how you tackle circumstances, it's going to decide if because I, I don't know if you've noticed this far, but in your walk with the Lord is always going to require faith. Hallelujah. It's always going to require you trusting God, trusting his ability in you because you will never be able to do the will of God in your own strength. It's not possible. God's plan for your life is going to require you walking according to the word and walking according to what the word says about you that's why it's so important to get the word hallelujah in your in your mouth and in your ears into your heart because as a man thinks in his heart so is he and you access all that god has given you by faith hallelujah so you know we're going to go to romans chapter 4 again i love <laughs> I'm going to some of my, the, the reason why they're my, some of my favorite scriptures is because there's, there's, there's light. I have received light. I have received revelation that has helped me in life. And I'm sharing it with you so that you can grab a hold of the same light and live in it. Hallelujah. And by it, be completely set free. Glory be to God. And I'm going to have to go in my Bible here because I didn't write all this down. Romans chapter 4, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is so good to us, isn't he? Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'm going to start in verse 17. He says, as it is written, I made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, or the ESV, ESV will say he calls things into existence. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God calls things into existence. You saw that in the beginning. God said and it was. God said and it was. God said and it was. Hallelujah. And did you know 
that you are made in his image, in his likeness, and the word of God clearly instructs us to imitate God as dearly loved children. You go to the book of Ephesians and you look at chapter 5 and verse 1 or 2 or somewhere around there. Hallelujah. Verse 18, who contrary to hope and hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. So he says, who contrary to hope and hope believed. So he didn't deny the circumstance. He didn't deny that they existed. He didn't deny the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't deny that he was about 100 years old. No, he didn't deny the facts. But in spite of it, hallelujah, he believed according to what was spoken. And that's, that's the key right there. What has God spoken to you? What has God spoken to you? What has he talked to you about? about your family? What has he spoken to you about when it comes to healing and health? What has he spoken to you about prosperity and his will for you to prosper? We need to go back to those scriptures and we need to rehearse those things that God has spoken to us just like we're going to see that Abraham did. Verse 19 says, not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old in the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform, and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It starts in verse 24. These things were not just written you know, it wasn't written for Abraham's sake. It was written for your sake so that you can see how you rejoicing in the promise of God, you giving glory to God for what he has promised you, what he has spoken to you about, hallelujah, will strengthen your faith. And why is that? Why will that strengthen your faith? It's because when you put the word of God in your mouth, you release the Holy Ghost to work on your behalf. He's the spirit of truth. He always takes hold with the word and reveals it. It's his job. It's the job of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. To reveal the word to you. But he, he, he cannot, and I've said this so many times and it's so true, he will not take hold with anything but truth. The word of God is truth. Hallelujah. And he will take hold with that and he will reveal it to you. And you will go just like Abraham, hallelujah, to a place of fully convinced, hallelujah, that God is able to do what he said he would do. Because when you start to rejoice in the word, in what he has said to you, hallelujah, you will, you will start to see. And the more you see, you, 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 you will see clearly that God is able. God will fill your windshield. Hallelujah. And you know, hallelujah, that what God promised, he is also able to perform. Hallelujah. So it's Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. What a better, t- there's no better time than for you to put the word of God in your mouth and just start to thank him. Hallelujah. For him being faithful to you. You can start for being thankful for the things he's done in the past. You can start to be thankful that you're saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes I think that we, 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 we get away from, 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 from the reality of the fact that, you know what? Hallelujah. I'm going to heaven. Glory be to God. I'm going to heaven. I will spend eternity in heaven. Glory be to Jesus. I'm going to be reju- reunited with everyone, hallelujah, that has gone on before me. Hallelujah. And we're going to rejoice in the presence of the Lord forever. Glory be to Jesus. But not just that. There are promises for this life, for right now, hallelujah, that you can start to thank God for. And you should also just thank him for your family. Thank God for the fact that you have a family. Hallelujah. You should thank God that you you, you have people that like, are, are happy to see you come home after your day at work. Hallelujah. You should be happy for those children, hallelujah, that call you mom and dad. You should be happy for those children that call you grandma and grandpa. You should be thankful that you have a home to live in. You should be thankful that you have food to put on the table. Hallelujah. God has blessed you 
more than you know hallelujah or more than you are aware of so let me go a little bit further into why it's so important for you to put these things in your mouth and start to speak them out hallelujah in philemon it's just one chapter hallelujah and it kind of hides out there and in, t- in Philemon, in verse 6, it says that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Basically, it becomes effective by you acknowledging everything that has been given you because you are now in Christ as a believer in Jesus. Hallelujah. And it says, you know, it, this basically says that it becomes effective and, and operative It's another word for that effective that's used in the Greek. By the acknowledgement, by you saying that it's so. Isn't that interesting? Hallelujah. It becomes effective by you acknowledging it. Well, (laughs) you will find this, hallelujah, when you walk with the Lord, hallelujah, when you start to acknowledge the things that he has, has done for you, when you start to acknowledge in the midst of contrary circumstances, you're gonna start to see Things turn, things change because it is true. Hallelujah. Because when, when God just needs your agreement. That's all he needs. He needs your agreement to walk with you. Hallelujah. And another scripture that shows this really clearly is in 2 Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. 2 Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. Well, this is taking a little bit longer for me to get through, but you know what? I'm not worried because now that you didn't have to drive here today, I figured to have half an hour for you to drive here, half an hour for you to drive home. So we have another hour. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Hallelujah. All right, let's get after it. Praise the Lord. In 2 Peter 1, verse 1, Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who obtain like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So you are one that's obtained like precious faith with Peter. Hallelujah. So now we need to pay attention. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. As his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. So it was given you when you find, found out about Jesus and you received him as your Lord and Savior. Verse 4, but which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So through these promises, you may be partakers of the divine nature, hallelujah, of all that he is through the promises, through you taking the promises and putting them in your mouth, hallelujah, and you start to acknowledge them, you start to meditate, you start to rejoice in the promises, hallelujah, you, you impose that in your heart, on your heart, hallelujah, and you will be fully convinced and you will start to, 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 to attack life completely different and you will start to access this grace that is yours, hallelujah, by faith. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And so, you know, the, the, this whole, I'm showing you this principle because you need to know from the scriptures how this works. And you will see that God has, he has done everything that he will do about your salvation, about your healing, about your prosperity, about everything that he has promised you. He has done everything. Hallelujah. A good example of that is John chapter 14, verse 27, which was not in my original uh, notes here. John 14, 27, is, you know, Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You know, that's, I didn't say the whole thing. But the point is, hallelujah, that you are to not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He leaves it up to you. He has given you his peace. He said, now you yield to this peace. He said, now you do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Hallelujah. It's like we talked about last, last time I was with you. We talked about you need, we need to resist the devil. God will not resist the devil for you. No, no. He has done everything that he is going to do about the devil. Hallelujah. For right now. And he said, now it is up to you to resist and it's up to you, us, to yield to God. It is up to us 
to guard our hearts. It is up to us to put in our hearts what is profitable for us and the plan of God for our lives. And I'm gonna show you even more here in scriptures how this works. And you are very familiar with this in Romans chapter 10. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For with the heart one believes under righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah. <laughs> so you believe with your heart and with your mouth, you know, you acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that's when you are saved, when you acknowledge it with your mouth. Hallelujah. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 19. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Verse 19 says, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. The world doesn't know that. There's many people, probably some of your, your relatives that don't know that. God has done what he needed to do for humanity through Jesus. And he has committed to us, the believers, the word of reconciliation so that we can tell people God has reconciled you to himself through Jesus. You just have to receive him as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. You need to confess him as Lord. And as you do, when you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. Hallelujah. And so acknowledgement is required. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, why can you say that? Well, you know, some people say, well, you know, I believe. I believe in God. Well, in James chapter 2, verse 19, it says, you believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. It's not enough to believe. No, you need to humble yourself and acknowledge Jesus as Lord, as your Lord. Hallelujah. And that's the thing. You know, he's always been Lord. Did you know that? He's always been Lord, but you have to acknowledge him as Lord to you. And that's the same principle you see in all of the word. You need to acknowledge God, not as healer for you. You need to acknowledge God as a provider for you. Hallelujah. You have to not just believe it, but you have to speak it with your mouth. Hallelujah. And I put here in my notes, a silent Christian is a defeated Christian. Whoa. <laughs> a silent Christian is a defeated Christian. 2 Corinthians 4.13. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak. It's not enough to believe. You need to move your mouth. Hallelujah. And declare what God has promised. Declare what is yours because Jesus is your Lord and your Savior and your healer and your provider. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And we need to hold fast to that confession. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, 23. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Hallelujah. For he who promised is faithful. Oh, I've seen this in my life so many times. Hallelujah. I would encourage you to do what I've done in this regard. I wrote down some of the promises of God and some of what I want to see in my life. I've had this one list now since 2017. I think it was 2017, I wrote it down, hallelujah. And I have it above my desk. And I look to it, and I speak it over my family. And I speak some things that I want to see. I speak, hallelujah, the end result according to what God has promised me as far as health and healing and as far as his provision for me. And I'm seeing it come to pass, hallelujah. And it's not based on feeling. It is not based on what you, you the, the, the outward, what you see out there, what is happening, what it looks like, because God will do, and I've seen suddenlies. When I, I've just been speaking, and it, it caught me by surprise. It was just there. 
but I've been speaking it, hallelujah, for years. I spoke it, I spoke it, and I rejoiced in it because God is faithful who promised glory, hallelujah. And you grow strong in faith just like Abraham when you will do like Abraham, hallelujah. When if you will do like Abraham, you will have Abraham's results because the word is true, hallelujah. And it will never, ever change, hallelujah. So never back off from your confession of faith. Keep on speaking the word, hallelujah. And your circumstance will change. I can promise you your circumstance will change. Kenneth E. Hagin said this. He says, the door to the supernatural, it swings on two hinges. Believing and speaking. Not just believing, but also speaking, declaring the truth. Hallelujah. And do you think that he saw that operate? He wouldn't have said that unless he saw it operate in his life. He said also another thing. He said a man will never rise above his confession. Glory be to Jesus. A man will never attain to anything above what his mouth tells him or or what his mouth speaks out. Hallelujah. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, friends. Death, life and death, hallelujah, is in the power of the tongue. Wow, you can build your life, hallelujah. I'm not saying that that's all you have to do, but if you can't even move your mouth, your faith will not move anything else either, hallelujah. You have to start. This is the basics of faith. Hallelujah. Believe in your heart and speak with your mouth. Declare what the word says. Rejoice, hallelujah, in what the word says. And glory be to God. Then God shows up, hallelujah. Oh, and light comes, revelation comes, and power is made available from God. Hallelujah. And I have another quote here from E.W. Kenyon. He says, confession is the road over which faith carries its mighty cargo. Confession is is the road over which faith carries its mighty cargo. As, as, you, as you speak the word, as you speak what God says about you, that cargo is moving, hallelujah, and is getting to your house. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. And Hebrews, let's go to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 35, hallelujah. Hebrews 10 verse 35 says, Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, hallelujah. For you have need of endurance. Glory be to God. So after you have done the will of God, you may receive (laughs) the promise. You have need of endurance. Hallelujah. This walk of faith. Hallelujah. It's a lifelong endeavor. The just shall what? Live by faith. That means you need to live your whole life out by faith. Glory be to God. And you will go from faith to faith and from glory to glory as you grab a hold of the promises of God. Hallelujah. You grab a hold of them and you you take a hold, you take ownership of what God has told you. You see yourself in the middle of the promise and you rejoice. Hallelujah. In the promise because the one who told you is God. He cannot lie. He loves you and what he said is true and you rejoice in it. Hallelujah. And then God can move on your behalf. God told me, you know, in in, in different words, but he showed me this exact same thing. I was in a situation, I'm not going to go into it because I'm not going to take the time, but I was in a situation where it looked impossible. And it looked like it was not going to work out. It looked like I had used the last three years of my life for no avail, and I was just rehearsing the problem. I was speaking the problem. And thank God, hallelujah, for people around us that can help us. That's why it's so good for us to come together at church. That's why it's important for you to have faith friends, hallelujah, that see like you see, hallelujah, and and, and that'll remind you of the promises of God when you're in a tight spot. And this was one of the ministers at Rama Rama Bible Church when I was down in Tulsa. I lived there for 12 years. And he came up to me. He didn't know what was going on in my life. This was a service, but he came up to me and he put his finger in my mouth and he says, don't limit God. He didn't say it. He yelled it in my face. It was very, very clear what God was trying to do. Shut that down and start speaking what I've told you. I was rehearsing the problem. And you know what happens when you rehearse the problem? It becomes bigger. The mountain now seems unsurmountable. You cannot attain to the top. You can't see anything but the mountain. And that's where I was. And I was discouraged. But guess what? I changed my confession. 
because God got my attention. He says, don't limit me with your mouth. Don't limit me with your words. I have plans and purposes for your life that are great. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future in me. Hallelujah. But it requires you to shut that down and start speaking what I say about you. Start speaking what the word says about you. And you might be in a situation today where things don't look great or they don't look like the word of God is true or whatever it is, but that's when you need to just shut down those thoughts from the enemy because he's trying to get into your mind. He's trying to make you take those thoughts and rehearse those thoughts. And then before you know it, your heart is not convinced that God is able anymore. And you give in to that and you start to speak defeat. You start to speak doom and gloom. You start to speak, oh, well, I guess it might be for, for all those other people. But I guess I'm not going to attain to, to, to healing and health. Or I'm not going to attain to having above and beyond so I can bless others. I will probably just never get there. And if you keep that in your mouth, you'll never get there. But if you will, if you will just arrest those thoughts, say, no, you're not welcome here. Hallelujah. I'm going to get in the word and remind myself of the faithfulness of God. I'm going to remind myself what God has done for me in the past. And I'm going to rejoice in that. And I promise you, your situation will change. Hallelujah. I have so many scriptures here. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to show one more scripture, James chapter 3, that will show you a little bit more about the power of the tongue. We need to get a grip on our lip. We need to watch what comes out of our mouth. Hallelujah. James chapter 3, verse 1. Brethren, not many of you become teachers, knowing that we should receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he's a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Wow. And even put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn, the, and, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are very large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See, a greater forest, a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, listening to an agreeing, that's listening to an agreement with your flesh, and is set on fire by hell. Well, <laughs> the tongue, hallelujah, has power over life and death. I've been out in the ocean. I spent... Uh, nine years, or like say about half of that, uh, of my work offshore. We were sailing the, 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 the seven seas, so to speak, and I've been out there, 27-foot uh, waves. Uh, you need to s steer <laughs> your ship up against those. If you don't, it'll just, the, the waves will just take you with, or they might even overturn your ship or your life, so to speak. Now we need to get a hold of our tongue and we need to, to set, our, set our, our life up against what is coming against us and we need to declare the truth, hallelujah, and we need to steer our life through the difficulty, hallelujah, and you will get to your destination. We always turn our ship into the weather, hallelujah, whenever possible. We put it into the weather, hallelujah, and that way we could ride out the storm and we could get to our destination, hallelujah. And the devil knows this. That's why he's trying to get a hold of your tongue. Because if he can get a hold of your tongue, he can get a hold of your life. And we're not having that, are we? No, no. No, no. Philippians 4 verse 8 tells us what to think about. This is your checklist. We should look to this every day. Whatever comes out of our mouth should conform to this checklist. If not, we have to make some changes. Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Hallelujah. That's very helpful. If it's not praiseworthy, if it's not of a good report, if it's not lovely, if it's not pure, we should not think or speak of those things. Hallelujah. And that way we shut the door effectively on the devil. Hallelujah. And then we put into our hearts what God says about us. Hallelujah. Psalm 23 should be in your mouth continually. Hallelujah. Because it speaks of you and the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Psalm 23, verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I like to put in here, I shall not want for opportunity, I shall not want for ability, and I shall never want for money. And I say that twice, I shall never want for money. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for you are with me. Hallelujah. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Have you ever looked into the, into the Hebrew here on the word goodness and on the word follow? Hallelujah. Goodness and mercy. He says goodness in the widest sense of good, favor, welfare, prosperity, and wealth. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. Goodness in the widest sense. Good, favor, welfare, prosperity, and wealth. Hallelujah. And the word shall follow me is actually a more active word than it's a more active word than I thought it was. It actually means to run after and pursue. Hallelujah. And that is good news. And that is God speaking to you. And I would encourage you to put those words in your mouth. Hallelujah. Goodness, favor, wealth, prosperity, favor will pursue me all the days of my life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 is another one that you need to put in your mouth. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 8, 18. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Thank you, Father. You give me pow- you've given me power to get wealth. Why would he do that? Well, he wants you blessed. He wants you to have more than enough for every good work. His grace, his anointing, his favor, his blessing, it's upon you. Hallelujah. But for that to be activated, you need to put those words in your mouth. Never say, I don't have enough. It doesn't seem like I'm ever going to get ahead. No, do not put those words in your mouth. Hallelujah. Glory be to God, because 3 John 1 says, Beloved, hallelujah, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. It's his good pleasure that you prosper and be in health, but it's going to happen even as your soul prospers. Remember here last time I talked to in James chapter 1, it talks about the word of God is able to save your soul. As you spend time in the word, as you, as you acknowledge what the word says, hallelujah, it'll change the way you think, hallelujah, and that'll change the way you believe, and that'll change the way you speak, and it will change your life, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God, glory be to God, glory be to God, glory be to God, hallelujah, <laughs> glory be to God. I want to bring you back for just a second to, 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 to <laughs> what Caleb said. It says he brought back report as it was in his heart. And that's the thing. What I've talked to you about today, it is about your heart. It is about you guarding your heart. It is about you putting the right things in your heart. You speak the word. You rejoice in the word. Hallelujah. And you will. You, you will trust God. You get to a place where, you know what? God is bigger than anything that I could ever, 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 hallelujah, meet in life. Hallelujah. And his blessing is upon me. His favor is upon me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And then I'm going to end here with a couple of scriptures. It says Psalm 103. And these should just be in our mouths all the time. Psalm 103 verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Glory be to God. Don't forget 
all his benefits. The only way you're not going to forget is if you stay in his word. Another one of my favorites is Psalm chapter 100, verse 1 through 5 as well. It says, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all your land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Glory be to God. Know that the Lord, he is God. And it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Hallelujah. And I would encourage you, I have many more scriptures, but I'm going to just round it off here. I think I've offloaded a good load of truth here today. But I mean, I would encourage you this Thanksgiving uh, season. It's just, it's just, we should be thankful all the time. One of my favorite preachers, he said, he said that the Lord asked him, he said, do you want to increase your capacity to receive from me? And he said, yes, sir, of course I would. And he said, develop a lifestyle of thanksgiving. So now we have thanksgiving. We're going to come together with family and friends. and It's going to be such a great time. Hallelujah. But I would encourage you just take time, maybe with your family, and just, just take time and just praise God. You just, as a family, you can enter into his, his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, because he has taken care of us another year. He has blessed our family. We have more than enough, hallelujah, to feed everybody. We have a roof over our heads, and above all, we are saved, hallelujah, by the mercy of God. So take, take some time uh, this, this, this Thanksgiving, hallelujah, to do just that, and just know that we love you here at Fellowship Church. We are, like Pastor says, you know, God is for you and we are for you, hallelujah, and we're so thankful for our, 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 our church family, hallelujah. We, 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 we've been called together, hallelujah, as a family, and we're so grateful for all of you. So know that we love you and, and have a great Thanksgiving and may the blessing of the Lord be upon you. May the peace of God rest on your home this Thanksgiving season, hallelujah. And we'll see you back here, hallelujah, on Sunday morning. Have a great Thanksgiving, y'all.